Yeah. Well, another cycle of hate that seems to continue, although it's a cycle of also love, is between these two players. As we start up here in the top right-hand side of the map, on top of the blue Terran player, he is Euthermal. He will swoo! Oh, what? You don't know about evil? Oh, we'll talk about evils after. Oh, I do. Gosh. Bottom left for Team Liquid. He is Mana. Whenever you thermal is teamless, I just kind of default think that he's like semi a part of evils. I do remember that little meme for a while that was happening. That was that was something. I certainly did not expect to hear it uh, from you. He, he right. was like one of the he was like one of the founders for the evil plan while he was on team. I, I know, but it just like you know, <laughs> you doing it alone was very much a very tired basketball coach saying, "Bring it in, team." A woo on three, and then he's the <laughs> only one that a woos. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a lone wolf zombie. Girl. <laughs> it's very fitting. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> We're just going to keep firing shots. You know, I, I stopped being mean to you. You're just going to keep being mean to me. I see how it is. I, I can't help it. Uh, it's a... <laughs> it's built into you now. It really is. It's amazing we're friends after 11 years of knowing each other. That is pretty crazy to think about. Yeah. Almost uh, as long as Mana has been on Team Liquid. So uh, is it? Is it longer? Has it been on no, from I think 2010? Yeah, I mean, we didn't know each other until 2011. Yeah, I know, I know. So I'm saying he, he was on it in 2010? I think so. I mean, yeah, he's been on it as long as I remember. Yeah, I can't remember any other team he's ever been on, so I think you're I right. I can't remember it. Oh, he was on Mouse Sports. That's right, I do remember that. Oh, Darn yeah. it. Oh, okay, so we've been friends longer than Mana's been on Team Liquid. I do think that's an achievement. Yeah, that makes me kind of sad. I'm yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I feel like it's a synonymous for me, but regardless, it's always, it's always fun to see those long stay players sticking around on a team and everything. Mon has definitely been one of those tried and true Team Liquid players, and he's had some big ups and downs in his career and stuff. And I, I actually feel like one of the cool things right now is I do feel like Mana, the specifically the last month or so, I feel like he's been playing pretty well. Like it always hurts me because I think Mana has those again ups and down swings that last maybe like a few weeks at a time. And I feel like he's on an upswing right now, which gives me hope for this match. I always want Mana to do well, and for a while it seemed like he unfortunately was never going to hit his potential, and then that Dream Hack Austin run happened, and it did feel like it kind of, at very least, confirmed for him that he has more to give to the game, right? So he continued being as reliable as ever. He didn't exactly continue to, uh, you know, get second places or get a first place, right? Terrell was going to dominate that year, uh, no matter what, but... I still think that he has progressively shown more of hitting his 100%. I mean, I guess if we're going to be, mm -hmm. you know, technical, no one hits 100% in StarCraft 2, but let's say that Mana used to hit his 90%, you know, for five minutes of the game. Now I feel like he hits his 90% for, you know, 90% of the game, actually. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of, of making sure that, that that is the case, because I know he can be really, really, really good. It just sometimes doesn't show itself. So I think it's nice to see him doing so well. Both of these guys are actually doing well enough so far in the group, but it's absolutely a group where fighting for fifth place is uh, very difficult. It's definitely not guaranteed, so <laughs> they need this victory. Yeah, I 100% agree on that. And it is actually funny that we're already talking about, you know, fighting for fifth place in this group because they are going to have some tough groups and stuff, but both of them actually not doing too poorly in their groups, like three and one for your thermal, three and two for mana since he has to play an extra round already. But right. we'll see what he's going to be able to do. This is definitely going to give one of them like a, a pretty substantial edge in the group and be able to make it out. Yeah. And to be clear, I mean, fighting for not getting fifth, but rather getting fifth. Yeah, sorry, sorry, yes. Because <laughs> top four does make it through. That was uh, potentially misleading to some people. But you get what I'm trying to say. Basically, top four is what they need, and it's still a mm. uh, not assured for either one of them. So we do have a Stargate opener from Mana. Euthermal is trying to get something done with his Widow Mind drop, but it seems so unlikely being caught out so darn early. So it tries to be a little tricky, but Mana's onto him. Yeah, uh, Mana already having the revelation on the Medivac means that he would absolutely see that Widowmind being dropped out, but taking a chance, ooh, gets the Adept. That's actually a nice snag there. At least gets something 
with the Widow Mines, but Stalker's moving across the map alongside the Oracles. This is going to be kind of annoying to deal with. Obviously, the Bunkers should protect them safely against the Stalkers, but it does mean all the Marines, for the most part, are going to be inside the Bunker. And it gives the Oracles an opportunity to try and move in and get some kills. Which they are going to get a couple. This opens up the opportunity for the Stalkers, although they, they can't quite know that. Now it tanks each up anyways. Interesting to see a wall come down for you, Thermal. A lot of Terran players don't necessarily wall at the very least this quickly, not unless they think they're being charged at all in. Um, and there is actually a reason not to nowadays. It used to be, you know, why not? And it was more just, you know, just doesn't seem to help as often as it does versus Zerg. But nowadays, there's a reason not to wall, which is that they do. There is a little stalker bug that I believe still exists, <laughs> considering that Blizzard mm -hmm. doesn't uh, <clears throat> come in at any point, check on their child. But <laughs> where the stalkers can shoot a forward supply depot to gain range, shoot the bunker. It's kind of cool. It's totally unnecessary. It has never changed a game as far as I know, but it does exist. More and more people are going to be finding Brood War-esque micro bugs, I guess, the longer this game continues to be kicking. Indeed. Uh, kind of interesting and cool how the Oracle, the, oftentimes the Terran player is going to be trying to be active with their Widow Mine drops and everything, but the Stargate usually shuts that down, right? A lot of the time, Terran players feel like they can't really move out once the Stargate gets really gets pumping or they have a harder time at least. I feel like usually it's when Phoenix are out and there are a handful of Phoenix out, but it really does feel like the Oracles are what have been keeping you thermal at home. Mana has been able to leave all of his Phoenix way back at home safely, just ready in case there is anything that snuck out. And the Oracles really just kept you thermal pinned back this entire time. Finally, we're going to start to see some medevacs come out now. But actually, I think the Phoenix are potentially in the intercept path for this right now. Potentially. We'll see if it actually works out. I think this is some nice counter you thermal play from Mana, by the way. I mean, I know they play each other probably a ton on ladder, but certainly, as we were pointing out earlier, uh, in you know bigger tournaments, but I think this specifically is nice play against you thermal basically what Mon is doing is almost assuring that he's going to see what's happening right with the oracles and then he's going to have the scarier army into into the early slash mid game that charge lot Phoenix army is going to dominate the mid game. So you thermal needs to be very careful if he chooses to move in here just because he could be overwhelmed and the counterattack is often immediate too, right? So mm -hmm. very scary moment coming in here. You thermal, he scanned the natural, didn't see anything. He missed the army. Now he scans the army. It's not that sizable yet, so he's going to try and take the fight. And we do have a decent anti-armor missile to start things off. Feedback also comes out on that Raven, so no more additional usage for that for a little bit. And Mono really wants to wait for this anti-armor missile to disappear before he really tries to go and force it into an engagement. Goes to the shield battery overcharge by himself a little bit of time. It does give time for all these Widow Mines and everything to set up. Revelation also gets thrown down on the Widow Mines, but the Oracle going down, does Mana actually want to try and commit further into this? Is he going to use the Phoenix to try and bait the Widow Mines over? It doesn't seem to be oh. working, and none of the Widow Mines go off. That was that was so bad, actually. Yes, absolutely. Mana was trying to get that drag, but it was... It was shown so far in advance. He might still get this around well enough to send U Thermal back home, but I think this actually might be it, man. U Thermal taking on an army that I think was designed to make sure this wouldn't happen, but that was one of the worst case scenarios for Mana's engagement. Like, wow, that was not at all what you wanted. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. Just watching so much of that investment of those Phoenix disappear without really doing anything at all. I think they maybe. Hit a few medevacs for a couple of points of damage. That's it. The thermal is definitely going to be able to take a W off of the back of that engagement. But uh, man, I feel like close and interesting game up until that point. Mana was doing a really good job, but just that single choice. It's so yeah. brutal sometimes in TVP how things kind of shake out after one choice to go for an engagement like that. Yeah, it was one engagement and done, uh, which wasn't at all the way it was supposed to be planned. Even if it had been mono favored, there's still always that chance that Euthermal is able to run home well enough with enough units to, to live. Like it's, I definitely wasn't calling the end of game right there for either person, but it was that bad of an engagement. You're right. Up until then, I think, as I was saying, I liked the build decision, the composition decision, and I liked the way that it was playing out already for Mana, who had just you know, taken care of all of the little harassment pokes uh, that Euthermal can often snowball off of. But that engagement was so bad. It was just the Phoenix, they showed their hand so visibly.
that it felt like it was slow motion, honestly. <laughs> like I saw it and I was like, no way he's gonna go for it because it's just, it's so obvious that Euthermal's responding too. It wasn't like Euthermal was late to moving his army over to the right side. So whether he meant to pick up the Widow Mines, which I guess not because he didn't actually pick them up or drag them, either way, it was, it was, it was the easiest. It was like a Terran was given the order of operation. Someone handed them a manual. They're like, well, first the Phoenix come <laughs> in, then the charge lots, and then you pick up your wood. Up. Like it just was so textbook and it's just not how it's supposed to go. It's supposed to be a lot more chaotic than that. Yeah, I think one of the other interesting things is that if you look at the angle that the Phoenix tried to come in from as well, the Phoenix were all on the right-hand side where the army was. The Widow Mines were actually mostly kind of in this like big backwards line on the left-hand side. So what ended up happening is the Phoenix had to run over the army to get in range of the Widow Mines and then pull those Widow Mines back into the army, which meant that the Phoenix are just kind of dying during that entire process. And I do wonder if there's like maybe some adjustments there. If Mana thought maybe more of the Widow Mines are on the right-hand side and try to come in from that angle, uh, obviously you don't know what's going on inside the mind of that Protoss player, but you can safely say this Terran player down here in the bottom right-hand side is now sitting up one and zero. He is Euthermal. In the top left, playing for a team Liquid, he is Mana. I was more willing to make myself look the fool. I would have neighed right there. Nay. Because it's, it's a horse. I don't yeah. know why Team Liquid's a horse, but it is a horse. I mean, it's clearly heavily inspired by the chess logo, right? So I always thought it was... The chess logo? Or not the chess logo, the, the knight from chess. Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. It's very heavily... It's like I chess think it's a logo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chess logo, you know, the ch chess the chess organizers, the, yeah. the owners of chess, the developers. <laughs> Weird. Um, yeah, but then... Okay, I mean, yeah, you're. I think you're right. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a strategy, nice, but... right? It's like, oh, we're like, we're all into the strategy, and we're all smart and stuff. Yeah, but then they could have chosen the horse and then some name to go along with the knight, right? It's gonna been like knights, but it's Team Liquid. That's true. What, do, what does Liquid have to do with? Uh, <laughs> that's the question. A knight? That's, that's a fair point. That's I don't a fair know. Question. I don't know. We'll have to ask uh, Nazgul back in two thousand. I don't know when he first put because his Because he won't Liquid remember Nazgul. anymore. We have to go back in time. Yeah, yeah. Him. Well, I mean, I guess because he put his clan name as Liquid and then they just had to come up with a logo and they were like, it's strategy. So I'm pretty sure that's how it came to be. It just doesn't match up very well. I will say they've done really great creative things with the logo. Just to oh, yeah. totally talk about I, nothing important. I, I say as I wear a Team Liquid hood <laughs> right <laughs> now because they have very good fashion sense for the most part. Yes, all StarCraft commentators have very good fashion sense, TM. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That's exactly what I meant. Uh, <laughs> so, Zomergram, I'm always curious, like, what are your thoughts when the Protoss player just goes for the third base? Is there, like, after mm -hmm. the Engineering Bay block and everything versus, like, the Pro pull and all the other annoying things that Terran players like to do? I mean, I think the guidelines are there. You know, this this is years old at this point, and the most mm -hmm. common follow-up was absolutely the Hellions, because it was just guaranteed to get damaged. The, the Protoss were very confused to what to do. Nowadays, it's, as I said, there's a guidebook. Uh, almost always go up to Stargate afterwards, but there's kind of like this weird meta thing that happens where you could kind of bet that the Terran doesn't Hellion follow-up because they assume that you're Stargate follow you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you actually just kind of go, whatever. I don't think you're going to do anything off of this. And then you open up with a Twilight Council. But I do think that it's designed uh, specifically just to offset a Protoss. So it's really dependent on how the Protoss individually feels like they deal with this, you know? And actually, two gateways. Is Mana going to try and contain you Thermal for longer? It would work. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's not exactly like there's going to be a bunker here anytime in the near future. So these Stalkers can continue to kite. The SCV coming in to try and get these stalkers to divert some of their fire maybe even body block them a little bit but a lot of these marines going down before finally Widowmine gets space to burrow in front Ooh, adept tries to go for the the shade play but euthermal's on top of it and it does take quite a while to get another one of those shade baits out yeah it does it's also again kind of one of those obvious things but every time the Widowmine on burrows he gets the shots so that's Ooh, more what yeah. mana was thinking of so that's very cute when the Terran player is only dependent on a Widowmine defense, things like this are 
uh, viable. Like this could have snowballed, but fortunately, Euthermal plays it out just right. And I think most importantly, Mana didn't fully commit to a proxy gateway or something like that, right? Because that would have been really, really scary. Uh, two gateway opener, not really delaying the natural command center all that much. I think I like Euthermal's position better. You know, Blink's hmm. gonna be quite late. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Because I was actually thinking that I, I liked a lot of what Mena's doing, but now that he kind of points stuff out, if he's able to get something done with some of the harassment stuff he has getting set up over here, I can definitely see it working out well for you, Thermal. But Mana's already got a couple stalkers ready and waiting. He, I mean, he obviously knows that there's Widow Mines on the map. It makes it a lot easier to deal with exactly where to position your units. True, 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 true. I do think it's one of those games where it really depends on the next minute, more so than what happened just then and there. So if Wood of Mine got a shot, obviously it's a big difference. If it is absolutely nothing, then Euthermal's follow-up to his Engineer May block is a failure. So, yeah. yeah, there's that to consider. And I guess in that way, Mana probably should be feeling quite comfortable. You know, is that the Wood of Mine drop is really the only thing going for Euthermal right now. There's no follow-up on the front lines. And that means that he's... Euthermal's going to be waiting for Sim and Combat Shields. So that's a long time for Mana to get triple pro production, get Blink, and hopefully charge with a plus one in there too. And with Blink finished up, and I think just the one Observer, but I saw the one Observer was by the Medivac. Where is it sitting now? I'm curious if he actually has the ability to do any kind of aggressive Blinks. He's, he's sending it across the map with these Stalkers, so he might be able to poke around up on that high ground, but the Raven plus all of the Marines are waiting there. So I think at most, Mana is able to get some chip damage on these units. If he really wants to play around, yeah, he can go after a couple of these Marines. But you know, when you see a Terran postured like that, I don't think you're going to be finding very much. And again, the bunker in the wall and the natural means that there's not much uh, to do elsewhere. And Whoa. just making sure that Widowmine Drop doesn't do any damage, probably priority number one. going to recall to try and take care of this. Observer did not come with the recall, so it's going to get a shot 100%. Oh, he had another observer that was coming along. Well, too late anyways. Two probes go down, not the biggest of deals. Yeah, solid defense overall. The medevac is still going to be able to survive in the corner, but it has no units inside of it to actually threaten anything. So Mana, hopefully realizing that, should not have to worry too much. But I guess he's actually sending a couple of stalkers in that direction. So maybe he does just want to play it safe in case there's another widow mine inside. Right, yeah. Just a nice thing to grab, too. Eventually, almost every Terran, not necessarily F2s, but just tries to get that out of the corner. Mm, right? the Protoss. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, so once again, we have Mana going into a very gateway-heavy composition. Obviously, last game we had Phoenix, and they did not work out whatsoever. But I think the idea with going into Charge Lot, Blink, and then some faster Templar Archives, right? Uh, feedback the Raven, which we was able to do last game. Do it again this game and then overwhelm Euthermal, who is very much more a mid-game oriented player. I think if Euthermal is forced into the late game, he's extremely uncomfortable. He's not necessarily bad. I, I think he gives himself too little credit and sometimes. Mm -hmm. I do think you can feel almost that he is uncomfortable, but then he has these really pop-off moments where he gets six rounds, you know, and really good disruptor micro, but he doesn't like it. So that's really what's key about this best of three, in my opinion, is Mana surviving the mid-game and just getting himself to the late game. Because um, confidence-wise, I don't know about skill-wise, but confidence-wise, I think Mana's going to be better mm. off there. Oh, I fully agree on that, but... Euthermal is charging forward with a very scary looking army, but charge back Mana does with all these Zealots, even coming in from the flank with a bunch of the Zealots that were getting ready for a run by. All the Widow Mines go off on the Stalkers, though, and that means that with the Zealots all cleaned on up, it, there's no splash damage on this Bioforce, and Euthermal's uh -oh. army is looking awfully scary right now, Zombie Grub. Yeah, it looks like it's going to win again. Yeah, Mana just cannot hold the, the mid game here. Euthermal is going to blitz through and make this look even easy which I, I don't think was actually supposed to be the, the plan. Mana might survive for now, but he absolutely had to take a good fight to really continue mm -hmm. on there, not not a mediocre or even bad one. And this was bad. Yeah, this is one of those unfortunate situations where there was not some massive tech transition you can rely on that he was getting set up. He has some Archons, but there's no Storm, there's no other big splash damage. And unfortunately, he is going to start getting cleaned up over here with all of his defenses. And you thermal going to be able to really situate himself in a great spot in this group. I mean, going to yeah. be able to go up now four to one, which puts him in a phenomenal spot to try and advance out. 
I mean, I, I think that almost guarantees him getting into the top four uh, with yeah. some of the other players in the group. Unfortunately, it's not getting any victories as of yet. So.